Hey everyone, today we're going to go a little more in depth with functions, domains, and range, and uh, just a lot of review here as well, so let's get started. First of all, when can you tell a relation is a function? Just remember, it's when every input has at most one output. Some of you guys just remember that from the vertical line test, but I really want you to understand it um, at this level right here, okay? So when every input has at most one output. What is the domain of a function? That is all possible inputs. The range are all possible outputs. And so if you have some members of the domain or given a member of the domain, how do you find its value in the range? Well, you just plug it in, plug it into the function. And I'm gonna do that right here with number three. So we have an input given a member of the domain, you know three is an input. How do you find a value in its range? Let's plug it into the function. So I've got the, the equation for negative four times x minus seven. Instead of x, I'm plugging in three, and we get negative 19 as the output. Likewise, negative seven is an input, so let's plug it into the equation again. This time, we get 21. So 21 is an output, and for the first one, negative 19 was that output. Um, I want you to try A and B on the right here now. All right, now that you got that, let's do a little more uh, domain and range based on graphs. Uh, this little word here, set builder notation, don't worry about that too much. Um, there are lots of ways to, to write that, and I'm going to show you guys um, a few ways to do that. First of all, remember domain is x, so remember go back to its all possible inputs. Can I plug in, for example, 6? Well, yeah, there's a point right there where the input is 6. The output is 4, but the input is 6. Can I plug in four? Mm -hmm. I can plug that in because there's a point right there whose input is four. And notice all these points, even between the numbers, like I could do negative five, any number going all the way left and all the way right is a possible input here. Now the way we say that is X is in the set of all reals, and I showed you that in a previous video, so I won't go over that too, too much, but um, X is in the set of all reals. You can also just write all reals. Uh, the range is the Y. You can plug in uh, 6, you could plug in uh, 3, you could plug in 0, you can plug in negative numbers between numbers or decimals. What about 8? Can I plug in 8? It seems to miss here, but you notice how the line has arrows on top and bottom? That means it goes on forever. So yes, I can plug in 8. So that means the range is y is in the set of all reals. Now on the right here, you see that's a parabola. That means it's a quadratic equation. It is concave up, but uh, those arrows, those keep on going up and to the left and then up and to the right forever. So if I'm looking at the domain, I can plug in any of these values and my domain keeps going right and left forever as well because those, uh, the, the graph keeps on going right and left forever. So the domain is also all reals. Well, after that, I want to look at the range. I could plug in, let's see here, two. It doesn't matter that I get two values out, or two, uh, sorry, I'm not plugging into, I'm getting out to. It doesn't matter that two different numbers give me two. You can have repeats in the range, that's fine. Any of these numbers up here are in the range. However, negative six, does, there's no point on that parabola whose output is negative six. So negative six is out of the range. So, where is the range kind of end if those numbers up there are in the range? Well, negative four is the very, very minimum. In fact, we call that the vertex or minimum of the parabola. That is the end of the range. So it's anything bigger than negative four. Hey, we have a, right th a way to write that in math. It's x is greater than or equal to negative four. Now, I just realized I did forget to do uh, decide if it's a function. You guys should know by now, vertical line test. All those only at once. So this one on the left, number five, is indeed a function, as well as the one on the right here is indeed a function because every vertical line hits at most one, at most one point, okay? So both of those are functions. I want you guys to try these two on your own now, and when we get to class, you'll share this with your group. All right. Now, given the function domain, find the range. We haven't done many of these. Right here, we've done stuff like this, but not find the range, this vocabulary. I know the domain is right here, negative 12, negative four, three, and 20. So I'm gonna put that into a table. 
to find the output, to find the range, I'm just gonna plug that into my function right here, negative seven x plus three. So let's plug in our first input, negative 12. We calculate that, we get 85. So that means that 85 is one of the elements in the range. Let's plug in negative four here. Negative seven times negative four is 28, so that is 31. And you guys can see, you guys can do the math for the next two if you want, all four of those numbers are in the range. So find the range, well our range is just 85, 31, negative 18, and negative 137. I noticed a lot of people in the quiz were not putting brackets, that's because I was not really specific about that. Um, that's what they mean by set builder notation. The bracket, you can just write at the beginning and end, okay? Um, I also saw some people mixing up domain and range and putting a parentheses and a, and a brace there. Um, just draw those brackets is all you need to do for domains and ranges because you notice they have the brackets at their domain right there. All right, so uh, I want you to try that one on the right right there right now. You're just plugging in for number 10 those domains. And it'd be easy, uh, I think it would be helpful to make a table. All right, now that you've got that, I wanna show you these number, uh, last two, 11 and 12. This right here just means all reals. Don't be confused by that. I will not be using that notation, so you can cross that out if you want. It just means all reals. Well, what do you mean all reals? Well, that means all we need to do is graph it. We're gonna graph that equation right there, and you can use a graphing calculator or you can use Desmos. I'm gonna use Desmos real quick. All right, notice my graph of Desmos I slapped up there real fast. Uh, that is very similar to the problem we did earlier that was a line. And if you notice, any line that cuts at a diagonal, going up and to the right or down and to the right, the domain is always all reals and the range is always all reals. So, for this function, the range, it's all reals. You can plug, you can get out any number from that, from that function. So, go ahead and try this one. I want you to either, you can either graph it on Desmos or graph it on your calculator. And remember, this notation right here, don't need to worry about that. It just means all reals. So in other words, we're graphing it. If you notice, if you remember, this squared right there means it's gonna be a parabola. So it's probably gonna be more like number six up above on the sheet where you're gonna to have to find the minimum or maximum depending on which way it's concave. All right, thanks you guys for watching. Uh, if you're wondering about the back, that is gonna be our classwork. So no need to worry about that right now. Um, if you want to get a head start, feel free to, but we will tackle that in class. Thank you very much.